Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be reviewing the vaunted Thunderbolt Mark 1, the premium Razorback P47 sitting at 4.3 BR in realistic or 3.7 in arcade in the English Tech Tree. I'll give you an overview of the plane, its strengths and weaknesses, and then I'll tell you if I'd recommend you purchase it or not. I know your time is valuable, and so is mine, so let's jump into it. So, let's go over the stats first. It's a 676 km per hour top speed, a 25 second turn time, an 11.2 meter per second rate of climb, and 850 cal machine guns. And to start with the overview, I just want to say that this plane is very special, being that numerous nations have a version of it, and many are able to be unlocked in the standard tech tree with silver lines. This means that, while you won't get the same exact experience with the Thunderbolt, you can easily fly in a P-47 to see how it flies, and if you like it. Just so you know, most people like it, and they like it a lot. The Thunderbolt Mark I is a British variant of the P-47-22RE, which is now present in the US tech tree. It flies well as an attacker, fighter, light bomber, etc. You can easily take out a base from realistic with this bad boy and still destroy ground forces with your 850 cals. The Thunderbolt, much like all P-47s, is an absolute beast and can do every role imaginable well, except for intercepting bombers that are higher in the sky, but I'll go over that in the next section. This said, your most effective role is to be a fighter bomber, leading an attack on a base with your 2,500 pounds of bombs, and then going to either destroy more ground units with your guns or dogfighting. You can do both very effectively. I personally recommend either the ground targets or tracer ammo belts for general usage between dogfighting and ground attack, with the ground target belt being a bit more versatile. Aside from this, and its other major role, the Thunderbolt thrives in close air support. Use either the 1,000 pound bombs and the 500 pound bomb or 6 M8 rockets plus one 500 pound bomb for the most effective close air support role possible. Personally, I would just stick with the bombs due to the lack of armor penetration with the M8 rockets, but do whatever you feel best doing. Now, aside from this, as mentioned before, you should try to avoid intercepting. While you can and should climb at the beginning of a match, your rate of climb will most likely be the lowest on your team, especially when carrying bombs. You can dogfight plenty well, but wait until the fight drops a few thousand feet, then you can take out your prey with ease. This all said, in summation, do whatever you want in this plane, but try to avoid intercepting if you can help it. And now that the overview is complete, let's go over its strengths and weaknesses. First, it has a great loadout. It's not the best as P-47s are concerned, but it's still quite capable, especially at this BR. Second, it has a good armament, bordering great. 850 cals is about as good as you can get for only having MGs as your primary weaponry. The primary armament of the P-47 was, and still is, legendary, for good reason. When you're not smacking around planes out of the sky, you can just as easily turn those 50 cals on enemies lightly armored on the ground, or even medium tanks on the ground, and damage or destroy them. The ammo capacity with over 3450 caliber rounds is insane. That equals 425 rounds per gun, which gives you around 35 seconds of firing time, which is many times higher than your average fighter. For its third strength, durability. This plane is ridiculously durable and can stand up to both bullets and bombs, especially if you're not that great of a bomber. Fourth, good maneuverability. The P-47 Thunderbolt Mark I can turn fairly well, especially for a plane of its size. While it won't beat a zero in a dogfight, you can dodge some foes like heavier variants of the Focke Wolf 190 or heavy fighters. Fifth, awesome speed and rate of dive. Although the Thunderbolt Mark I lacks a great rate of climb, once it gets to altitude, it can speed by many of the fastest planes at its BR, such as the Focke Wolf 190A4, Mustang Mark 1A, and the Spitfire F Mark 9. If you see a target of opportunity below you, whether a plane or ground target, you can easily race towards it with your ridiculous rate of dive, due largely to the weight of the plane plus its engine strength. Additionally, another strength is versatility. If you've ever flown any P-47 minus the one in the German tree, you know how much these can do. Whether you're fighting air, ground, or even sea, this plane can do it all and without complaint. And finally, premium bonuses. 
With as with all premiums, the Thunderbolt Mark I has both RP and Silver Lion bonuses. On this play in particular, they seem to be unusually high, beating out similar BR English premium planes at least at the moment. And now for the very short list of weaknesses. First, Rate of Climb. Its rate of climb is fairly mediocre as it sits at only 11.5 meters per second and realistic, and is severely hampered when adding any payload. With its heaviest payload, rate of climb drops to a meager 6.6 .6 meters per second. While this is still serviceable and you can eventually drop your payload, it puts you at a serious disadvantage versus nearly all foes, like the TA-154 that has a 16.1 meter per second rate of climb, or the KI-43-3 Otsu, which is at 16.6 .6 meters per second rate of climb. This will also seriously hinder your effectiveness as an interceptor, as mentioned before. For weakness number two, the roll rate. The roll rate is subpar on this plane, especially when facing fighters known for their roll rate like the Faka Wolf 190. This could put you at a serious disadvantage when trying to escape a dogfight. And finally, it's just a large target. The Thunderbolt, as with all P-47s, is a large target, and thus will be seen more easily and has more places to be shot. Keep an eye out for enemy bogeys because they'll probably see you long before you see them. And now, finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, my recommendation. Being that this plane is only 1600 Golden Eagles, or around the equivalent of $10 USD, it costs around the same as similar BR premium planes. One could take a look at the TA-154, which is 1450 Golden Eagles, I've got a review on that, link below, or even the Hellcat Mark III, which costs 1300 Golden Eagles, has slightly lesser stats and arguably lesser maximum loadout, the Thunderbolt is not quite like those, although as mentioned, the Hellcat Mark III is kind of like a poor man's Thunderbolt. The Thunderbolt Mark I brings not only the first P-47 to the English lineup, but brings a level of versatility to mid-BR matches, whether they're air or ground, that the English did not have before. One could argue that the Typhoon Mark I-B could fill that role, but it doesn't quite have the same level of capability when attacking ground. Being that its cannons can't pen any better than the 50 cals do on the Thunderbolt, and its secondary armament isn't quite as good. Also, premium bonuses. This said, do I recommend the Thunderbolt Mark I? Yes, wholeheartedly. This plane is ridiculously good, like all P-47s, and can do anything that you need it to. Plus, as a bonus, it's a Razorback and has an awesome paint job that's stock. For the cost, capability, and fun factor, the last time I had a premium plane around this BR impressed me so much was the TA-154, and this is far more versatile than that plane could ever be. If you have the Golden Eagles and are looking to shore up your mid-BR air-ground lineups for the English, look no further because your best friend now only costs 1600 Golden Eagles. That all said, thanks so much for watching guys. This means a ton to me. Please, if you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe as all three things massively help to grow my channel. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below and tell me if you've bought this beast of a plane for yourself. Either way, thanks again guys, stay safe, and be excellent to each other. Take care dudes, see you all on the other side.